Hello again guys, it's Greg Ola Productions here on uh, doing a little interesting little video on the Greg Ola Record Show and I want to know if anyone has had anything like this happen. No, nothing. well nothing's really awry here, we'll get into it. Anyway, everyone's aware that I have this BSR slash RCA, well I guess it's an RCA console stereo but it has a BSR record changer inside. That is the original changer, Facebook. I took this thing to Facebook and everyone's going, oh, it must be from the 70s. It's got slide controls. Hey, that turntable can't be original. Guess what, everybody? It is original. This is how the console stereo came. And I'm not going to say where I got my sources here from. But I do know that this is how it was uh, back in the day. Now, I believe this is from the 1960s at some point. I would think around 1964 or 5. Of course, we've got the catalog here. We're going to go through that in a video here soon. And uh, you may notice, well, what the heck is this, Greg? Well, this is where the lid stay was, and that's what we're going to be talking about. No, we're not doing any servicing to the record changer. We already did that on my other channel, which was stupid. I should have done it on this channel. That's okay. I'll link the playlist to all that jazz in the description there. But anyway, okay, the lid stay. It's currently not on here right now. And... Uh, well, you're ask you must be asking me. Well, Greg, how does a lid stay? The thing that literally holds up the lid. How does that develop a problem? That's a very good question, viewers. Well, as you know, when the lid's down on any any machine, it's supposed to be flat, unless the wood's like bent or something. As you can see, it's flat. Well, with the lid stay on this machine mounted to it, the lid was like this. Okay, it may not be a big deal to some people, but once you see that, it just drives me nuts. So I've been operating this thing without the lid stay for a little while, and today we're going to look at the lid stay and see what the heck's the matter with it, and why is it not going down all the way. Because it's supposed to go down all the way, and it doesn't. Now this is somewhat of an unusual model for a console stereo, and I think that's why Facebook got all freaked out and they didn't understand what was happening is because uh, this is a Canadian model here. And I don't know what RCA's... We'll just take a cl uh, quick look through the catalog here, which, yes, this was with it. We will look through this. I mean, I don't know how common these models are with their BSR record changes. I would think these would have only been sold in Canada. Not the changer, but these models. As you can see, there's various models here. There's my grandmother's handwriting, and there's the console. St so, I, I mean, yeah, as you can see, the lid is down all the way. And on the other models, it's supposed to be down, too. And I think this is part of the RCA's minstrel series of console stereos. They gave you a BSR record changer inside. And as you can see, it has the slide controls, which everyone thought was from the 70s. Well, I don't believe that. Anyway, we'll get into this catalog here. At another date, but yeah, let's okay. Let's go. Let's go figure out what's wrong with the lid stay on this thing. So that's the lid stay and its supporting screws. Now it's a very. Um, I know I'm, I'm far away here for a second, viewers. Hold on. Okay, so this is a fairly um, pecul peculiar looking piece of hardware here, and uh, I think if you look closely, you can already see what's wrong with it. And I, I've I've just seen this now too, but we're not gonna go there quite yet. So here's the lid stay. This is how it mounts to the bottom. You've got your screws. Mounts to the bottom of the, well, it doesn't mount to the bottom of the cabinet. It mounts to that flat wall looking piece of wood. And then here's the part that mounts to the lid. Now, if we have a look at this thing, and I was discussing with someone here, I thought this was riveted together. Well, I guess, yeah, it is riveted together. It's got a big spring in there. And uh, that's not quite right, viewers. Look at that. If we push this down, or try to, I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if we have the strength to or not. Okay, she doesn't want to move. As you can see, when the lid moves, this thing moves, and it's all kind of dependent on this, well, rivet over here, slash hinge, or whatever you want to call it. And there's a spring here to make sure the lid doesn't go slamming down on you. And as you can see, this thing is grinding itself up. And I should also mention, uh, in addition to the lid not going down all the way, the uh, lid stay was making kind of a grinding sound on its way down. 
when you move it up and down and make a grinding sound. So that's not right, viewers. So let's just see how we're doing lubrication. Well, I see this thing has been lubricated at one point or in, well, back in the day. Okay, I'd say that lubrication's gone completely bust. And uh, if there was lubrication here, or if there was anything anywhere, it seems to not be uh, not be part of this assembly here anymore. And this doesn't need anything. So really, it's just this gets pushed down and this spring keeps the lid up. And that's how you can prop. And I don't know how I don't know how common or unusual this is on RCA's. RC, ugh. I don't know how common or unusual this lid stay is on RCA's console stereos. But uh, yeah, this I mean I've seen it on other console stereo. Well, I haven't seen this particular lid stay on console stereos. But because there is a lid stay, you can have the machine with the lid not fully closed, but not fully open at the same time. It's a pretty interesting look, and you should be able to do it with this, too. Maybe I'm rambling. Okay, let's go get the grease. This thing was operating fine for a few months without lubrication until it started grinding itself. Well, it made a grinding noise, and as you can see, this is completely uh, gold now, so this thing's made of brass. So, so that's great. I don't know, uh, yeah, it did work fine for a while, and then it developed an issue. So let's see what we can do here. Okay, well, let's start over here first. I know most people would not even look at this piece of hardware twice and think, oh, that's, you know, what's, what? They look at it and go, well, what do I need to make a video on that for? I don't know, I just figured I'd make a video on this just to show everybody. It's not exactly the most pleasant looking grease now, is it? That's okay, no one will see it. Because, I mean, you're staring, when the thing's on, it's, it's, it's facing forward, so you can't see what's going on. <laughs> That's probably enough lubrication. Um, just spread it all out here, over here. Nice and even. Okay, there we go. I think, I think we'll go with that. Does that look terrible, or, <laughs> or what? And we'll put some on the other side. So as you can see, viewers, they didn't, um, there's no oil on this. It's just grease, more or less, I would think. It seems to just be grease. We're going to put grease on this then to continue with RCA's theme of grease. Greg, do what you're, um, focus on what you're doing in frame, how about, for a change. Okay, so we've greased that. Whoops, I think, I think there's still a little bit too much over here. Okay, I think we're, I think we're golden. <laughs> that, that was unintentional, viewers. I know this is golden for sure. Okay. Let's just hope this is a lubrication problem and I didn't somehow bend this lid stay or something stupid didn't happen to it where something's not, not quite how it should be in here. I mean, if that were the case, how would you get in here? I mean, it's literally just a, a little industrial grade spring. I mean, look at that. It used to be, yeah, it, it's some sort of industrial grade spring, and then, and then it's riveted together. So that you know, yeah, I don't think anyone I know would want to be uh, lending me their drill press. Not that I know anyone with the drill press. I mean, I guess yeah, drill press. You could drill a hole through here and put it back together with some sort of screw and washer assembly. Ah, mm, yeah. These things with rivets, I don't know, it's always a it's always a joy. And I see this thing moves up and down. I've just spotted that. I didn't just I didn't just spot it, but I just thought of that. Yeah, this moves up and down. I think that was loop is lubricated in there. Okay, we're gonna get her in there too. I'm using, uh, I hate it when people don't uh, tell it, tell you what grease they're using. I almost did that. It's it's, sim it's a synthetic power fist multi-purpose grease. It works on a lot of things. Multi-purpose is right. This is great stuff. Okay, we're gonna get this in here. <laughs> okay, gotta maneuver around here. There we go. Get that in there behind the spring or in near the spring anyway. This is the back of the lid stay. You never see this, so I can 
Well, I'm not going to say I can make as much a mess as I want. I don't want to mess up the wood on the cabinet for this thing. Okay. About the console stereo's date here, I mean, it looks kind of... I don't know. As people on Facebook were saying the machine was from the 70s. I'm... Well, A, I've got my source, and B... Well, it's a family source, really. I mean, there's memories of this thing being in the family uh, before... 1970 so it's like 1964 or so I would think anyway I mean yeah the, sure the the veneer or whatever you want to call the oh what the heck do you call it that's so, oh it's completely slip it's not veneer by any chance is it I don't know that wooden cabinet texture I completely forget I think it might be veneer that cabinet texture, yeah, that's kind of 70s, but the rest of it doesn't look like a 70s design. Whoops, let's just gently push the camera back up. There we go. I don't know, viewers. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing 64, so. I think I think we have enough grease here, viewers, as well. We'll just jam her in there. You know what? For something like this, this isn't a clock movement. I think we can almost afford to over-lubricate this just a bit. I don't want grease stick. Well, there's. <laughs> I don't want grease uh, sticking out everywhere. I think we'll clean. Have to clean this up a bit. Once we're, once we're done ruining it, for the second time. That's okay. I can't ruin it any more than it already is. I mean, this thing is worn to brass here again. And we're gonna see how we did. We're gonna see just how we did. Okay, I think that's probably enough. We don't have to go down there by any chance, do we? Nope, that's just uh Okay, we're good. This is actually a lot simpler than I thought this was. I thought there'd be some sort of rubber design in here or some crazy little thing. I didn't know the back would just be opened. And that's good RCA has done that, actually, because if the back wasn't open, you couldn't get access to this little boxy thing here that moves up and down and then the spring pushes it up. Yeah, I think you get what I mean. The back's open, it's great. And now we just clean it up. And I don't wanna to be touching this thing too much or else I don't, well, I, well, I don't wanna get a bunch of grease all over the cabinet. Well, I guess that's not really cleaning, is it? You're just kinda of wiping it. I'm just kinda of wiping it, not you. I'll leave it like that, I think. No one will notice, except for me. You can rivet, uh, keep that up there. I didn't do a terrible job. Well, more on the back. <laughs> more on the back. And we can just wipe off the access on the spring because it doesn't matter. Okay. And since this piece doesn't actually touch the back of the cabinet, we can just kind of leave it greasy a bit. Okay, let's hope we did a good enough job and let's reinstall this thing now. Okay. Maybe when, uh, if you have to do this with your machine... Maybe don't use quite a, uh, quite as much grease as uh, I have. Now let's see here, which one... I'm just trying to work out which screws go where. There's two different types of screws here. So we're gonna figure, okay, this mounts like... Okay, the next like seven or so minutes is just me fumbling around with the lid stay screws and not realizing that I'm not actually filming anything I'm doing. So we're just going to skip ahead until I realize uh, what I've done wrong, and uh, we'll pick up from there. And this is what I was talking about earlier, where you can have the lid open, but not open. Okay, so let's see what we've done here. Okay, this is how it mounts on. And I'm trying to get it to stay up more so I don't have to screw around. Well, see, it just goes right down. Oh, look at that. It stays now. Well, we fixed the problem, but we did that. We fixed it a little too good. <laughs> um, that's great. We uh, lubricated that lid stay, viewers. Now it really doesn't want to stay. Okay, well, how do we fix this here? I'm thinking. Mm, maybe there's too much. <laughs> I'll come back to you guys in a minute. Obviously with these things it doesn't have the lid doesn't have to stay all the way up But I just want it to be up enough so it's Oh Man, I just want it to be up enough so I can get in here and I guess I can get in there, but 
it's kind of inconvenient as you can see that's all the room i have to reach my hands in there it's kind of inconvenient to screw around with this thing man oh man viewers that was stupid of me i could have had the camera up on the turntable yes you are currently sitting where my records get played okay well now you get where everything is how the screws are laid out and i don't want to strip that bottom one because that bottom one's slightly um slightly worn so we're not going to do much more with that just trying to tighten this up just a bit of course the key is to t with tightening screws you tighten them but not too tight oh dear good thing i didn't add any oil that uh any more oil or, in, or <laughs> any uh, oil that has more of a or less of a viscosity here okay how can we get it to stay like this because as you can see, if you look out here, I mean, there's plenty of room to get in here with your hands and things. Here's the turntable. Oh, boy. Hmm. That's a very interesting. I don't know. See, it's supposed to stop right about here. But it just keeps on going. Oh, no. Hmm. We'll try it like that. So as you can see, there's a bit of sawdust in here. And, uh, well, that means uh, two things. A, you're not supposed to be messing around with the screws with this thing a whole lot. And B, there's no, uh, there's no metal screw threads. This is just drilled directly into the wood. So that's the thing with this. You kind of have to make your adjustments, know what's right, know what you need to do, know what you did, and then get out and don't come back. So I'm going to have to come in here with a vacuum cleaner and vacuum that up here quick. As for this thing and how it's sitting, I think we can pass with like... Uh, I think we can get away with that. I think we're okay. So as you can see, it's open enough now. So I can reach my hands in here, change records, fool around with the radio, smash some of these, you know. The stuff you do with console stereos. Uh, yeah, I think we're okay with the lid stay right now. I think we're good. Okay, well, a couple of days later and a couple of uploads later, we finally managed to get the, the lid to uh, stay up right. And I don't know if it was a mix of me messing around with the screws, which I haven't done since the initial video. Um, yeah, but I, yeah, I don't know what, it ex what exactly it was. I think it was staying like that in the video. Which, I mean, that's a fairly good height. You can get in there, you can change the records, you can do all you need to do. And I can have the camera uh, set up to upload. And then, of course, it's zoomed in on the turntable. And if it's too dark, then, uh, then I'll just turn the phone light on and you can get a better, well, slightly better uh, light and see the record spinning. And uh, usually what I'm going to do now probably is upload during the daytime. Uh, so we can't look at the stars together anymore. So that'll significantly help with the lighting. So basically, I think it's case closed. Um, this seems to be okay. It's not making a bunch of noise when you open the lid and, and shut it. So I guess my, fi my final thoughts on this are uh, try not to over lubricate these things because uh, if I really overdid it, it would probably be somewhere down there. And uh, it <laughs> wouldn't be any good for uploading now, would it? So yeah, I don't know. If your lid stay starts having problems, no matter what it is, if it's this type or another type or whatever, I don't know what, I don't know, there's no numbers or anything on it. Just make sure not to overdo it. I think I overdid it just a bit, but it seems to have worked out okay. I don't know, and I know I said earlier, earlier in the video that the lid is supposed to be higher than that. I don't know if it actually is or isn't because I've never I never saw this thing when it was brand new and how the lid originally sat. So uh, I'm gonna assume that that's probably how it was because I know it wouldn't have been all the way up. Well, I doubt it would all been like that. And see, it sits. Well, it just creaked there. It's it it sits like that. So that that's good enough. Anyway, viewers, I hope I haven't bored you too much on this one. And uh, I'll tell you what, though, I'm bored. I got really nothing better to do. All I have to do is make videos on lid stays. So uh, it's going to be a lid stay channel, I think, from now on, viewers. So anyway, viewers, I'll uh, see you in the next fantastic video.